Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm taking a look at the Hot Toys Ellen Ripley six scale figure from Alien. Let's see how she turned out. All right, first up the packaging. It's pretty Spartan. About the only really eye-catching effect on that front is gonna be that lenticular Wayland Utani design. There's an image of the figure itself which that testifies to their confidence in the figure. Um, on the back, of course, we get the credits. Overall, we've got that really awesome green color that we've come to associate with the Alien franchise. The box, as you see, slides off, giving us a glimpse of what's going on on the inside. On the back, we have on the back we have a bit more of a streamlined version of the credits. But let's get to the guts of the thing and see what's happening on the inside accessories and loads of them so many cool toys for you to play with including probably most obviously is this flamethrower look at the detail on that thing so many tiny fragile bits be careful when handling that in addition to that we're going to have this really really awesome motion detector keyed off of micro changes in air density and everything again fragile look at those little hoses on there and everything like that be very careful when handling that as well and last but not least, well, not quite last but not least, but we have this really sweet sci-fi kitty carrier. It's going to open up. You're going to be able to put Jones into it and have her haul him around or just have him sit there. If you have an alien figure, a big chap figure, as limited as it is in articulation, you might be able to do something fun with that in your display as well. Hands, yes, of course, plenty of hands. Um, a sweet, a sweet Nostromo-themed base. Let's get moving and see what we can do with this thing. When I first started posing the figure, one of the things that I noticed right away was the garish seams on the forearms. It's not something that I've noticed before in posing any other Hot Toys figure, not female figure at any rate. I think that that's more down to the fact that every other Hot Toys female figure that I've had has been wearing long sleeves. This, this is likely, as far as I can recall, the first one that I've ever played with that, that didn't have long sleeves. At any rate, that's really the most egregious call out that I can make from the figure, so I'm glad we got that out of the way. Really quickly, before I move any further, I'm just going to go ahead and place Jones in his kitty carrier here just to see how this thing works. Um, because once I'm ready to put the kitty carrier into Ripley's hand, I'm going to want to have that done already. I'm not going to want to mess with that. Notice how he's just not looking out of the kitty carrier. That's. I'm not sure what to make of that. I. Um, I think that was likely just a judgment call on Hot Toys part. They could either have Jones looking straight ahead, in which case he'd be able to be looking through the glass of the kitty carrier, or they could pose him in a more dynamic, frightened, cat about ready to bolt sort of position. That would be more attractive in a display if you were going to be displaying him outside of the kitty carrier, which, let's face it, if you really want to get a good look at that little accessory there, that's really the way to go. Two mistakes that I want to call out that I'm making right here. Um, first and foremost is that the her right knee, as you can see, I have bent the knee at the lower part of that double joint and not the upper part. So her to the top of her leg, as a result, looks unnaturally long. In retrospect, I'd probably go back and, and adjust that. It's always crucial to pay attention to both of those joints in, in the double jointed knees and arms on male and female figures. The other thing that I neglected to, and this one's probably more obvious, is that I had the gun, the flamethrower, in her hand without slinging it over her shoulder. So I'm having to fix that right here. Now, if you're watching the inset and not the actual video portion, you'll, you'll not see this. But what happened was when I did that, the strap is very, very tight for this position that I had the gun in. And I wound up breaking the strap off of the front hook right there. That's... Easily fixed, as it turns out. I think Hot Toys planned for that to happen. They were very cautious and they used a softer plastic on that hook so that it just bends and just, it, it, rather than snapping, it just pops off. At least, hopefully that was intentional and that's how it's supposed to work. I apologize in advance if any of you happen to follow the same path and your hook, instead of breaking free, actually breaks off. But let's just assume that's not going to happen. Um, as you can see, I have the basic pose pretty much dialed right here, and what's following is, is essentially just tweaking, but I think that's pretty much got it right there. Um, make a few minor adjustments, yeah, mostly down to angle. I'll try to drop her down just a little bit to make her look more aggressive, more frightened, more cautious. Yeah, you see, she's like, she, like she's getting ready to peek around a corner there. Um, don't want to go too much, have her squat too much, or have her feet too far apart, because then it just looks awkward. 
Notice that wristwatch in this image. That's one thing that I neglected to do is make sure that that wrist, that's kind of what it's there for. They planned on having it there to cover up that wrist joint. The gun, the flamethrower actually will hide, mostly hide to the right wrist joint, but you'll need that watch to be in proper position to make sure that you don't see that unsightly wrist peg. Yeah, there it is again. Another thing I'm noticing right here is the zippers on her pant legs. Notice how they're just kind of, the one on the right is just kind of free floating out there. Her right, not our right. Always try to make sure that those things are obeying the laws of gravity and that they're hanging down the way that they should be. Hmm, look at that portrait. That is just spot on. Hot Toys really on their game this past year. Not the best of 2017, but it's right up there at the top. And look at that base. Highly evocative, very much reminiscent of the architecture of the Nostromo. Love it. On a personal note, I like to group things in threes, and the 80s for me were represented by three different franchises. Alien, Terminator, and The Predator. Apart from Star Wars, those three films represent the pinnacle of sci-fi from my youth, and I plan to have them all three displayed together. This one, the T-800, and my classic Predator. That is until Hot Toys brings us Power Loader 2.0. Hope you all enjoyed the review. See you next time. Until then, be good to your plastic.